Everyone knows about carbon dioxide. It's a natural part of life. People inhale oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide. This odorless, colorless compound is not poisonous, but it can be dangerous in two ways. First, in its gaseous state, CO2 displaces oxygen, so it can cause suffocation in high carbon dioxide in its solid state, also known as dry ice, can cause frostbite if it comes in contact with the skin. If you work with CO2, there are a few things to keep in mind. Your workplace is required to have a safety data sheet with information on how to safely handle, use, and store CO2. I recommend that you read the safety data sheet before using any substance, chemical, or mixture at work. In a gaseous state, you're likely working with CO2 in pressurized cylinders. Your employer will have a storage area for these cylinders that is well ventilated and away from any heat sources. It might be tempting to roll, drag, or slide these containers, but resist. Even though the gas is relatively stable, damaging the containers can cause a leak, which is hazardous to the entire workplace. If you're working with CO2 cylinders, your employer should provide additional training on how to handle, store, care for, and fill these types of cylinders you work with. Just know that in summary, CO2 cylinders are safe if they're properly handled and maintained, but can cause serious injury, property damage, and even death if not properly cared for. Depending upon the type of work you're doing, your employer might provide safety equipment, such as a mask or respirator. These safety precautions are based on the CO2 concentration in the air. Unless you're a manager, you probably won't be responsible for any monitoring. But it can be helpful to know that the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, dictates what monitoring is necessary at your workplace. If the air is being monitored, you have a right to know the figures. So, ask if you're worried. The biggest concern when it comes to working with CO2 as a gas is a leak in the workplace. You need to know that CO2 is heavier than air, so after a leak, CO2 can pool in confined spaces, like tanks, trenches, or low-lying areas. If you notice a leak at your facility, report it immediately. Your employer will help you stop the leak and ventilate the area. If you're exposed to too much CO2, you might experience headaches, dizziness, and confusion. People who breathe high concentrations can lose consciousness in just a few minutes. In very rare cases, high enough concentrations of CO2 can cause organ injury or even death. Now, this doesn't happen often. Just be safe and follow all safety precautions outlined by your employer and the safety data sheet. If you or a colleague is exposed to CO2, you need to move quickly. In case of inhalation, get to fresh air as soon as possible. Next, get medical help immediately, even if the individual didn't lose consciousness. Up until this point, we've been discussing CO2 in its gaseous state. CO2 freezes at nearly 100 degrees below zero. The solid state of CO2 is also commonly called dry ice. You cannot touch frozen CO2 or dry ice without appropriate safety equipment. You'll need gloves, eye protection, and possibly insulated protective clothing. Any skin contact should be evaluated quickly as well. Even a momentary exposure can cause frostbite. Minor frostbite causes numbness or itching. In more severe cases, the skin can turn white, blister, or become infected. No matter what kind of CO2 you're working with, safety is key. Don't underestimate the hazards of carbon dioxide simply because the compound is all around us. Use the personal protective equipment provided and always alert your supervisor if there is a problem. Your life and the lives of your colleagues could depend on it.